What's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel today and welcome to today's Buck Breakdown. I really appreciate you being here and it's always fun at the end of the season to learn something to go back and look at these encounters that we had throughout the year. Try to figure out why these bucks, where they were, when they were, what they were doing and why they may have responded the way they did. So we're going to start with one of the coolest encounters we had this year. Actually dad had this year. Unfortunately it didn't turn out the way he wanted it to but one of the coolest encounters that he has ever had in his life and that I've ever seen and we actually know a lot about this spot we got a little bit of history with it as far as I hunted right here last year had a little insight on what I wanted dad to do down here and uh, man it almost worked out for him so we're gonna do a couple of these hope you enjoy it so without further ado let's get into the map and see if we can break this thing down so what we're looking at here this is the MLD property that dad and I hunt which means it's managed land deer permits we get permits by the state uh, not state issued white tags uh, we got to take so many deer off this property this property is really cool because it's community based um, all the areas you're allowed to hunt wherever you want scout basically hunt any stand you feel like you might have an opportunity at so it can be competitive but it's a lot of fun kind of has a public land aspect to it and it is tough hunting it is East Texas thick woods creek bottom hunting so it's a lot of fun and it's super challenging so let's check out the map here so what we're looking at here is down here at the bottom right we have a big peak or at least an East Texas peak uh, just around that 250 and you see this this creek line that comes across the middle of the screen I got it outlined with the blue dot this is a little small creek you can see it's kind of like an SMZ uh, where they've left the bottoms and harvested the timber and replanted pines around this location So I scouted this a year before and where you see this little marker is where I actually had planned to hunt And I actually have hunted previously right over here just above this buck symbol uh, Last year didn't see anything only hunted at the one time uh, I've scouted all through here. So when dad joined me on the property He asked about a spot that he might want to go set up. I said you need to go down here there's just so much going on. You can also see there's a food plot that we do try to work on every year. Super sandy soil is hard to get established, but I told Dad to go down here to this clearing with this new pine plantation right on the edge of this creek. There's an old crossing that curl, curls up through here and just set up a spot in here. See what happens throughout the year. So but let's break down this individual hunt. So this was October 20th of 2020. And dad went down to this area and the wind was out of the south southeast blowing from this peak where you see the 250 down over the creek and across the timber and so the way dad approached it is he came in from the north and he came down the trail and he came all the way to this creek edge and what I told him was last year right along that creek edge where you see this spot symbol now there were several scrapes that I found at the end of season last year and we needed to keep an eye out see if those scrapes were going to be open back up and there was a lot of sign through there a lot of historic sign a lot of rubs and sure enough as he entered this creek bottom right here he proceeded to go west and he curled along this creek bottom until he passed about five or six scrapes and they were so fresh he decided to go ahead and kind of sit there and set up basically he's got the leeward side of the hill in front of him and he's looking down to this creek bottom he set up on the ground with a small rifle. You can hunt rifle early season at MLD on this property, just so you know. And he set up, and this was at 4 in the afternoon. It was about 80 degrees. It was plenty warm, 4 in the afternoon. Not ideal, not when you expect most people to be out uh, being very optimistic in the stand. So Dad gets down here to this creek bottom, and he kind of brushes himself in, gets himself a little stool set up. And like I said, the wind is coming straight down off this hill and over that creek bottom. And he takes a little set of rattling horns. And he said he just tic tac them together, clicked them a little bit for about 10 seconds and set them down. And when he did, within about 10 seconds, these two bucks were on him within 10 yards. He had a big eight point. Oop, I think I kind of messed that up. That came in from his right on the left side of the screen down off the hill down this creek bottom and ran right up to his face at the exact same time he had a 10 point that he said was every bit of 18 to 20 inches wide came down from his left our right here came down from the hill 
down the creek bank and was on him actually ended up right in front of him at 12 yards he showed me where he was set up and I stepped it off and it was a very short 12 yards so these two bucks were bedded right on the edge of this creek bottom on the leeward side of that hill looking down into that bottom massive oak trees down there a lot of white oaks that were dropping at this time of year last year these bucks were bedded up there and they were on him like that that's how that's how close they were and he was down there probably within 30 yards of 30 to 40 yards of both of them and when he rattled they were on him like that now it didn't quite work out he got his gun up pulled the trigger and it went click on the 10 point eight points sitting there watching and chambered another round he said it had a round in it he said the bolt wasn't laid over ultimately is why he thinks it didn't fire um basically what it comes down to is we'll probably never know <laughs> so but the interesting thing is is these two bucks were in that area as we've all heard before on the leeward side of this hill in east texas and they were bedded up there going down into this creek bottom and feeding you know up the creek or down the creek i found a lot of sign where bucks were moving up and down this creek you know going down in here feeding along through here and they also pop down in here and travel this creek back up he'll go around into the wind at least is what i think that buck ends up right in front of him at 12 yards the other interesting thing is his dad has a camera bam right there all year and he never got a picture of that 10 point never he got a picture of an eight a couple of decent eights probably one of the ones he saw but he never got a picture of that 10 point which is really interesting because that was a mature deer he spent time in that creek bottom he was also never seen on this food plot he stayed in that creek bottom and he stayed in that thicket and never showed his face he never popped up into that area in front of a camera at least we still don't have pictures of him but he was there because he was seen twice he was very cautious as of east texas mature deer are so really cool encounter one of the coolest i've ever heard of watch and listen to him tell that story it was amazing i know one of the coolest encounters of his life you know he went back down in there later on about a week or two later we're approaching that first of november and these bucks were up cruising and gone i'm sure but early season they were hanging down on the right on the edge of this pine plantation on the leeward side of this hill feeding up and down this creek i think he just hit it just right when his thermals weren't dropping down in there or he pulled them across basically he didn't even give them time to think about it so that goes to show you sometimes changing up your tactics being aggressive getting down in there and and calling moving you never know sometimes you have to go to them because he hunted this spot a little bit further up into this clearing he actually has a stand in here now he hunted up here a lot this year and he never saw a shooter buck in that clearing not even on the edge so it goes to show you how smart those mature bucks are and what you have to do to get down in there and get in there with them especially those early times of year but they were right on the edge of breaking loose responding to the call which is really cool this is one of the coolest things that i've ever had a chance to kind of go back and look at look at the conditions wish i'd have been with him so we could have gotten something on camera but i probably would have fainted right there on the ground especially after the rifle misfired but very cool encounter and time well spent him and i hunting together guys i hope you enjoyed this breakdown we got another couple of breakdowns to do as we look back on what we encountered last season try to understand where these where these bucks were and what they were doing which is super valuable to take the time and go back and do that look at the conditions piece it all together so hope you enjoyed the video guys come back to see me on the next one appreciate you guys being here and we'll see you next time at least 18 real 10 point Hey. I was on him. Hey. What do you think happened? The boat wasn't down. You had it pushed in, but it wasn't laid over? I had, I had the boat wasn't all the way down. So you, you, you wasn't back there?